And that is what Hyperland has done to the Linux community. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's me, your friend, Tanner Babcock here. I am making a long-awaited, very highly anticipated video, yet another Wayland video. I'm going to be looking at just Hyperland, just the craziest thing that's come out for Linux in a long time. It's, uh, it's super popular. Uh, everyone loves it. Everyone's using it. Uh, it seems like every new rice I see on Reddit or on YouTube is Hyperland. You know, it's easy to configure and it looks really great. It looks really nice. I mean, look, I can switch between these windows here. It has this nice animation. Uh, I've configured it to do, like if I spawn a new window, it comes up from the bottom, and then when I close a window, it drops back down. And <laughs> I just figured that out last night, so I'm still figuring it out. Uh, this thing just has a ton of features. I mean, it's just beautiful, really. <laughs> the GitHub description is a Wayland compositor that doesn't sacrifice on its looks. And yeah, it's just straight beautiful. <laughs> it comes with uh, the rounded corners by default, but I disabled those because I don't like rounded corners. Um, here's the configuration file. A lot of this stuff is the default, and some of it is not. There is a lot of configuration options that are not present in the uh, the default configuration file. So I've been reading this very helpful Hyperland wiki. They have it a uh, wiki.hyperland.org, and there's all kinds of helpful information here. So this configuration file is kind of kind of weird, though. It would be easier if it was in a uh, JSON or YAML or something, but you know, this is fine. It still wasn't that hard to configure. This uh, syntax here is for a gradient, which is very cool. You can make the, uh, the borders on the windows have a little, uh, a little gradient action going on. And as you can see, there's some blur back there. There's my awesome Vaporwave Windows 95 <laughs> wallpaper. And uh, it looks really cool. I also, I don't know if you noticed, I also figured out how to uh, make these cute browser elements uh, transparent. So my cute browser looks a lot nicer now and it looks really cool with that blur that Hyperland gives it. But yeah, I mean, look at how these new windows appear. It just looks so cool. <laughs> I mean, in Hyperland, you could just spend hours just opening windows and closing windows and watching the animations, and it's just so satisfying. It took me forever to get Hyperland running on my system. I don't know why, I think I just needed to update, do a big system-wide update on my Void Linux machine, and I think that helped me. And uh, I've been trying to build it from the source just forever, <laughs> but uh, it just would not compile for me up until the last time I updated my system, and then it compiled, and now I'm on Hyperland. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be, Hyperland is my thing now. <laughs> this is going to be what I'm going to use every day. I'm not going to use a river anymore. I probably won't use Sway anymore. Because why would I need to? This just looks so beautiful. <laughs> yeah, this Hyperland wiki has a lot of helpful information on it. It tells you exactly what every config option is and uh, the type the type of variable it is and an example or uh, the default value and I think these config options are supposed to be in these uh, these little sections right here for input for general and for uh, decoration 
so that's cool. Something that's really cool that I noticed that Hyperland does is uh, if you change this config file like I'm doing right now, I'll make this say 13 and I'll make this say 10, and uh, I just write these changes to my Hyperland D <laughs> dot conf and uh, yeah, look at that. So Hyperland, you don't have to restart Hyperland. It automatically, it's always reading that configuration file. And if it detects a change in that config file, it's going to go ahead and apply those changes to your current Hyperland session, which is really nice. And it's just so fun. I mean, it feels like a full a well-rounded desktop environment experience. I mean, even the little windows like my WAB meter up here, and like, if I wanted to send a notification, uh, the notifications just kinda fade in and fade out like that. Here's my fuzzle. The fuzzle menu kinda fades in and fades out. Uh, it just looks so great. I mean, I'm having a blast using it and configuring it and uh, and playing with it. I think you can use uh, gradients anytime you see like a color, <laughs> the color format here. Here's the animations section, and uh, I really struggled to kind of understand and comprehend the uh, the syntax for all the animations, but. There's a page on their wiki here, and it tells you all the different types of animations you can do, and the default animations are still really nice. <laughs> like, you might not even want to change the default animations, because uh, they look really nice, but I changed them, and here's where you configure your uh, devices, the physical devices, the mice, and keyboards. Here are all all of my window rules, of which I have just a, a bunch <laughs> for all of my programs to make sure they spawn on a not only the correct workspace but the correct monitor also. So like MPV, Emacs, OBS, uh, GIMP needs to be floating, just stuff like that to make my life easier. Uh, this is a tiling window manager, aka tiling Wayland's compositor. So that means new windows are tiled into the layout like that. Uh, I think Hyperland is really not only drawing existing Linux users into the world of uh, tiling window managers, but also I think it's going to attract a lot of Windows and Mac users to Linux just because it looks so beautiful. I mean, people are going to want to use this. <laughs> it's like every post on that uh, Unix porn subreddit. It's just Hyperland, Arco Linux, Hyperland, Artix Linux, Hyperland, yeah. <laughs> And I'm, it, understandably, they all look beautiful. They all look awesome. I love looking at them. I had to define a lot of my uh, my own key bindings here because there's some stuff that just was not uh, in the default configuration. Like O and P to move windows uh, between the monitors. Uh, by default, it came with the, the arrow keys to uh, change the focus of the, the different windows, <clears throat> like mod, up, down, left, right. I changed that to be uh, HJKL, the Vim key bindings. But yeah, a lot of this stuff is still uh, just the default. I think you can have some, see their, their configuration syntax is a little funny, but you can still put in like some command line options or uh, the pipe here or a semicolon. 
Uh, it was really easy to configure. I mean, I got up and running with it in a day or two. <laughs> Something that was kind of tricky, though, was uh, this way bar. Let me show you just a second. I don't know if you guys saw my last stream, but uh, I talked about Hyperland and Waybar on, on my last stream, which is here on YouTube. Here's Waybar. This is the status bar that I use for all of my Wayland compositors. I use this, and uh, it has separate configurations and colors for Sway, River, LabWC, and now Hyperland. This does have some Hyperland support. Uh, it doesn't support it very well. I think just because Hyperland is so new and Wayland stuff is so new, I don't think it's totally updated. But uh, see, I have these workspaces down here. And uh, to get the workspaces to show up on, a, on your Waybar in a Hyperland, you have to compile it yourself with the... Uh, the experimental flag. Somewhere in here. Yeah, when you build the project, you have to make sure the, uh, the experimental features are enabled in order to get these workspaces uh, to appear on your Hyperland Waybar. Not only that, but if you want to be able to click on the workspace icons, like clickable buttons, you are, uh, you're going to have to patch Waybar for Hyperland. I'll show you how to do that. Waybar, Hyperland, Git. You should bring up the AUR package. This very helpful uh, fork of Waybar for Hyperland that uh, has the patch included. I'm going to look at this package build here. And this is the package build for waybar-hyperland. And this is the patch. <laughs> this is the important line. Really, if you want to patch your, uh, your source code for waybar for hyperland, you really just need to run this command. And this command will uh, edit the source code file so that uh, clicking on a workspace icon on your waybar will actually uh, tell Hyperland to focus that workspace. I'm hoping waybar uh, updates so it's a little bit easier for Hyperland users. I'm sure they're already working on this. I'm sure someone has a, a pull request or something, but uh, until they make that an official release, if you would like to use Waybar on Hyperland, uh, be sure to check out this AUR package because it has this patch in it that is uh, it's going to help you. I'll show off my website right now. Here's my website, tannerbabcock.com. I'm working on implementing an RSS feed for my website, for all the boomers out there. <laughs> uh, that's something I've always wanted to do with my website for a while, and now I'm kind of getting into RSS feeds and stuff, so I'm going to implement that. I have all kinds of cool stuff on my website. Here's my Linux page. I have the Void Linux install guide. I have the basic uh, Unix and Linux shell commands. I have Git for beginners, all kinds of helpful stuff on my website, so check that out. And there's a lot of helpful stuff on this Hyperland wiki. All kinds of options, and there's all kinds of possible, uh, not just configuration options, but values for these configuration options. Like uh, these window rules right here, you're going to have to type some regex, regex here so that uh, Hyperlands can detect, uh, you know, compare the title of the current window with what it sees in here, and so it knows what to do with that window. 
Uh, if you've ever used a tiling window manager, if you've ever used a DWM, BSPWM, uh, you'll be able to figure out Hyperland. <laughs> it's not just this crazy can of worms where you're constantly editing source code like DWM, so <laughs> you should be able to figure it out. It is relatively uh, beginner friendly. It ha They have a lot of stuff on this wiki. There's that uh, command again for Waybar. They have the instructions to patch Waybar right here on the Hyperland wiki. So that's really nice. But I would I would predict that you know at some point in the future Waybar is gonna have more support for Hyperland. Uh, it just seems like every video, every rice I see about Hyperland lately, it just looks so cool, and people are going crazy over it, so I figured it's time I make a video. <laughs> My last video is doing really well, even more Wayland's compositors, where I looked at LabWC and DWL, the DWM for Wayland. And I just looked at those two because I did I couldn't get Hyperland working at that point, but now I got it working and you know it's just a blast. Have all of these nice effects. New windows come from the edges of the screen like this. It's come you know, if it's gonna be up top, it's gonna come from the top and it comes from the bottom like that. <laughs> It's just so fun, man. I love I love using this. I mean, just the existence of Hyperland just makes me excited to be a Linux user. It makes me excited to be a computer user. And uh, it gives me a lot of hope for the future of Linux and the future of free and open source software. I mean, <laughs> this this program did not exist a couple years ago. <laughs> so it's brand new, very brand new. Uh, unless you have a rolling release distribution, you're probably not going to get Hyperland working. Like if you use Debian, you probably won't get Hyperland on Debian. I'm only really seeing like Arch Linux rices with Hyperland or Void rices with Hyperland. There's a lot of helpful stuff here. Here's the uh, the docs folder. It has these man pages. I think there's some configuration. Yeah, example. Here's the example directory. Here's the example hyperland.conf. This is what the default configuration for hyperland looks like. Now I've noticed you can also just type yes or no instead of true and false for the uh, the boolean options. Uh, if you're having trouble building Hyperland or getting Hyperland to work, I would suggest uh, make sure Dbus is running, make sure uh, seat D or e login D is running. You're going to need one of those two background daemons to run any Wayland compositor, really. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> Man, I love Wayland stuff. It just seems like there's a lot of people out there I know who just... It's like they hate Wayland, or they think Wayland is just this stupid thing, or they think Wayland is just this broken cluster of crap that doesn't work and it's alpha quality software and it's not going to work for them but <laughs> I've been strictly Wayland for six months now and it's great I'm really not looking back I'm not looking back to all of that xorg crap <laughs> because it is crap and I think that's why you know people want to shit on Wayland so much is because if you really move over to the Wayland side of things, you're gonna have a bunch of, uh, <laughs> just a bunch of config files, a bunch of different programs, 
all kinds of stuff that you wrote and that you set up and that you configured for an XORG session that now on Wayland all of that stuff is useless. <laughs> all of that stuff is you, you just don't need it. Throw it away. You know, here's my dot files repository. I've I've been actually considering just like deleting my bspwm config, uh, deleting my polybar configs, uh, delete sxhkd, because <laughs> I I really don't think I'm gonna go back to xorg. I finally got obs working on Waylands now, so <laughs> I really have no reason to fire up an XORG session ever again. And I don't know why anyone would want to. I mean, XORG, the X display server, th that program was written in the 80s. That program was written for computers when computers were so much different than they are right now. And every day, every Linux user is just using this big the cluster crap of code, a 40-year-old code, all kinds of cruft, all kinds of crap, legacy code, uh, backwards compatible stuff for stuff that no, no one has used in 30 years. I don't know, man. <laughs> never once on Wayland, never once have I seen the little, the screen tearing when I try to watch a movie. You know, the little diagonal thing. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never had issues with font rendering. Uh, I've never had issues with my inputs. Uh, I think people are just salty that, you know, they don't want to switch to Wayland because they don't want to throw away all of their X bind keys RC and their SXHKD RC and their I3 gaps config. Because, you know, none of that stuff will work. None of that stuff will carry over into the Wayland experience. That is all X software. And I mean, I use Emacs here, and uh, Emacs still doesn't have native Wayland support, so this is actually a X Wayland window. But uh, it looks really nice. I'm really happy that I was able to set to make my Emacs window uh, transparent see-through because whenever I used Emacs on Sway or River it was just a solid background. Emacs is always transparent on an X session with a, a compositor running but on Wayland because it's an X Wayland window uh, it was just it was just gray just an opaque gray background but I was able to set uh, the opacity on this Yeah, right here. Opacity. So you can change the opacity, you can change the uh, the workspace a certain window appears on, you can change the border color. See this MPV window is green and the default active window border color is uh, this red gradient here. So you can do that. I mean... <laughs> You can do whatever you want with it. I, hi I cannot recommend Hyperland enough. It is seriously a life changer. I mean, just look at how fun this stuff is. Just look at it. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of software. It just came up on the scene. I can predict for the future a lot more people coming over to Linux because they want to use Hyperland, because they want to use the beautiful Arch Linux Hyperland Rice. <laughs> I can see more people getting into the tiling window managers or uh, the tiling Wayland's compositors because uh, they saw someone with a Hyperland Rice and it looks awesome and uh, <laughs> You know, it just looks like this really nice experience. My cute browser looks so nice with it. I just figured out how to make this cute browser transparent. So you can see behind the status bar there and just, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with Hyperland. I cannot recommend it highly enough. 
And now it's that time of the video where I talk about my GitHub Sponsors profile. That's right, if there's anyone out there at all who wants to give me some money, if you like my work, if you appreciate my work and you want to support me, please head on over to my GitHub Sponsors profile and you can choose to give me any amount of money you want. You could give me a monthly subscription, you could pay a, a custom amount of money per month, you could give me $4 a month, you could choose to give me $8 a month, you could give me $16 a month, you could give me $32 a month, or you could give me $64 a month. Or you could pay however much money per month you want. It's right here. Or you could give me a fixed one-time payment. However much money you want. Here's some examples of my work. Here's a lot of my, uh, my homework projects that I've completed over the years. Yeah, I would really appreciate some money. I really need some money. Uh, thanks, thanks guys. Thanks for watching my videos. Thanks for watching my Wayland videos. Uh, please leave a comment if you liked this video. And uh, remember, don't forget to like comment and subscribe to my channel anyway guys i hope you enjoyed my video i hope you check out hyperland and uh, i hope you enjoy it it's a really great piece of software it is a life-changing piece of software uh, it's just awesome <laughs> well anyway guys 